Hello and welcome to this meeting of the Aaron and Her Missionaries. When you can take our logo into consideration, uh, God has called all of us to be watchmen, to watch for the sword when it comes, to blow the trumpet of warning so that God's people would be warned, you see. And if, if the sword come and take away any person from among us, and he is taken away in his sin because we did not warn then his or her blood will be required at our hands. That's how literally we take this verse. And I learned a long time ago, a wise old professor taught me that anytime you can take the Bible literally, to take the Bible literally. So we take this verse as a charge to us, to the church, and as a missionary here at Aaron and Her Missionaries, we believe it is our job, along with everyone else's, to warn to warn the church and warn the world about what God says about what's going on uh, in the world today. Now, this is uh, Sunday, April the 14th, and we want to report to you what we've seen and what we have come to realize from the Bible as to what happened on Saturday, yesterday, April the 13th, 2024, and where all this is heading because many, many have questions uh, that need to be answered, and we believe that's what God has called us to do. So, as Christians, we are commanded to pray. Uh, just want to get your mind thinking about Israel. As Christians, we are commanded to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And today, we are going to learn some new reasons as to why and what's going to happen and what, what our prayers are. Uh, should be triggering uh, as we pray for the peace in Jerusalem. As you know, uh, uh, Iran attacked Israel yesterday, so we got up this morning and uh, we prayed and asked God the Holy Spirit. I knew yesterday as I seen the, the rockets, the missiles uh, trying to fall into Israel that we needed to report in real time what God is saying and what this means to the world, to the church, and to you and I as individual Christians, okay? So in response to that, we put together this message called Iran Attacks Israel. Now, this attack on Israel by Iran is in response to Israel's April 1st bombing in Damascus, Syria, that killed two top Iranian generals. One of these generals specifically was responsible for shipping all the weapons into the Gaza, into Gaza, and also into Lebanon, to Hezbollah, and other proxies of Iran uh, to launch these attacks against Israel. So he was a very legitimate and worthwhile target for Israel to take out. But ever since April the 1st bombing, uh, Iran has vowed to respond. So we understand, and we're going to see it again tonight, that Israel is surrounded by those who would seek her annihilation. And given half a chance, they'll try anything they can to get this done. Now Israel are these haters of the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay, are supported and financed by Russia, by China, and also by the United States of America. This administration um, has allowed the Iranian Ayatollah to have 10 billion dollars that were frozen by the previous administration. What do you think the Ayatollah has done with that 10 billion dollars that our president handed him? He didn't bless Israel with it. He bought more weapons. He bought more missiles. He bought more drones. Amen? Along with the money that China Billions and billions of dollars that China is giving them and Russia with whatever support they can. Remember this. Remember this. Just 38 months ago, Miss Debbie, 
The United States was the biggest producer of crude oil in the world. That's when gas was under $2 a gallon and dropping. This administration has declared war on crude oil production in America. And this, among other policies, have greatly increased our national security risk. These insane policies have caused Iranian crude oil to be more in demand, which hurts Israel. Because it strengthens Iran and gives them more money to buy weapons and send to their proxies. All the while, America has burned through most of our strategic oil supply because of terrible, horrific policies that have put all of us in danger unnecessarily. The current administration has emboldened Israel's enemies. However, this has not surprised God. He knew it was going to happen before he ever made the world. He's still on the throne. He's still in control. And he has talked to us in his word about why this is happening and what's going to happen next. We don't have to be surprised. Last night when we seen all the bombs coming, we knew that one day Iran was going to attack Israel, especially the last couple of weeks because everybody knew it. But the Bible has foretold about the trouble in the Middle East in our day. That's what we ought to learn. That's what we ought to focus on. And pastor, that's what we ought to be teaching the church. And that's what the church ought to be shouting out to the world. Amen? Now, as we, uh, I want to show you tonight what to look for, as the Bible has showed us what to look for in these latter days that we find ourselves living in that points to the Lord's return. We were uh, started our series of the signs of the times messages, and the first sign was signs in the natural world, and we'll pick back up with that next week, the Lord willing, but tonight... I thought it pertinent since we was a Bible prophecy ministry to point out what we or what God has showed us in these three years that we've been focusing on Bible prophecy. Let me ask you, first of all, to consider a question. Why is the land or why is war in the land of the Jews a sign the time of the Lord's is a sign of, of the time or the season of the Lord's imminent return? First of all, until May the 14th, 1948, there had been no nation of Israel for thousands of years. And they are the only nation that has been dispersed all over the world for thousands of years that have come back to, be got to, to their homeland to be a nation once more. So until that happened, none of this was possible because Israel was not there. And Israel coming back to their homeland is what started uh, are kicked off like a cantilever all the signs of the times after Israel came to really explode in their frequency and intensity. Israel becoming a nation in May the 14th, 1948 officially began the countdown to the Great Tribulation. Okay? First, let us answer the question as to why we are commanded to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Look at Psalms 122, verses 6 through 9. The Bible says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Any nation, any individual that loves Israel and prays for Israel and does good to Israel will be blessed and will prosper. And I believe with all my heart the reason America is still hanging on by the, by the skin of our teeth to being the number one nation in the world, the most powerful nation in the world is because we have blessed Israel all the way through it. It says peace, we ought to pray for peace to be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces for my brethren and companions sake. Just like David, when we got born again, my friends, you see, David was born a Jew, but when we got born again by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins, then, my friends, we were engrafted into the Hebrew family. We've all been 
engrafted into the Jewish family. So when we're praying for the peace of Jerusalem, we are praying for our family. We're praying for God's family, you see, Amen. for God's people. And he says, I now, I will now say, peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Amen. So it is clear that God expects America and expects the church to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and not only pray, but to do good for them and to speak up for them because of the house of the Lord our God, we will seek to do their good, to do Israel good. The Bible has foretold that in the latter days, after Israel has returned to her land, the ancient enemies of Israel will seek her destruction. Okay? None of this, again, think about it, none of this would have occurred unless Israel would have come back. And God said when they do come back, here is what's going to happen. We're going to look at that tonight. Because we have witnessed, we have witnessed for many years now, for many years now, the unification of hatred as the children of Ishmael from many countries surrounding Israel have come together as allies against Israel. Now, we find this ongoing war in Psalms chapter 83 that is predicted would happen and it mirrors what has always happened before when, the, when Israel and God's people were there in the land that he gave them. That's their land. God gave it to them. And they've been there for thousands of years. They left for a little while, but they came back just like God said that they would. Remember, whatever God says will be, will be. Now, we find this ongoing war and it's going to continue to go on and escalate. It's, it's happened a little slower than we thought it would. But what happened was everything changed. There was always these words going back and forth and little skirmishes, you know, with Israel and those that hate her. But it all changed on October the 7th, 2023, when Hamas, who is an Iranian proxy, supported and given weapons through Iran, attacked the land of the Jews. And because of the savagery and brutalness of that attack, the Middle East will never be the same again. It cannot and it will not. This war will take us into the Great Tribulation sooner than you may think. Well, they won't take the church because I believe the church is going to get snatched out of here. So the quicker the Great Tribulation comes, the quicker we're going to get pulled out of here just like Noah got pulled out before the wrath of God rained down on the world and just like Lot and his family got pulled out of Sodom and Gomorrah before the wrath of God was fire poured out on Sodom and Gomorrah. The church is going to be delivered and taken out of this world before God begins to pour out his wrath on a Christ-rejecting, God-hating, Bible-hating world. Mm -hmm. Now we have watched this current uh, United, uh, U.S. administration back up, back up in their support of Israel in the last couple of weeks because of world pressure and because this president will do anything to buy votes. Amen? Amen. Now, threatening, we have been threatening to hold back support from Israel. And all that did was embolden our enemies and their enemies. I mean, a six-year-old could figure that out. I even heard Chuck Schumer call for new elections in Israel to topple Benjamin Netanyahu. Well, this just tells Iran to pull the trigger. All the while, China is sitting back laughing uh, because we're using all of our resources in the Red Sea and, instead of having all of our ships and armament out in the Pacific Ocean where it ought to be. Laughing at us, spending all this money while they just sit back and buy up America. The United States must understand from this point on there will be constant war of one kind or another against Israel. There will be some laws, but that's just because people are strategizing their next attack. 
Okay? There will not be any peace in Israel until the Prince of Peace comes back. Israel may go after Iran's nuclear facilities. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I do know this. I do know that Israel is wanting to take them offline for years now. So it could be just what they need now, an open door to attack Iran's nuclear facilities. We shall see. I'll be surprised if they don't, but I'm not a prophet. I'm not prophesying, but with common sense, I would say that's where they're going to go. Especially since Iran fired missiles at Demonia, which is in Israel, that is the site of one of their nuclear facilities yesterday. Escalation of some sort is inevitable because Israel's enemies will not back down. They will not stop until God makes them stop. And that is at the end of the tribulation period, if you study the word of God. There will be constant war now against Israel leading up to the great tribulation. So what we saw last night as the Iron Dome, all three tiers of it, was taken out the missiles whether they be cruise missiles or ballistic missiles or, uh, or bombs fired or let down from drones. We see all these coming in and being blown up in the air. You see, this, this, my friends, was telling us that our redemption draweth nigh because we are fastly headed toward the great tribulation period. These, because you must understand, imagine if you were living under this constant bombardment. And they say that every house in Israel has a safe place mm -hmm. with inside of it where they can, a bunker, if you will. But still, you never, they could come in like they did on, in October of 2023 by land. You, you never, they never, no matter what they say, they keep on a brave face. And they're angry, but there's got to be fear. There's got to be fear. And this constant threat of war against them by everybody around them is leading up to the great tribulation so there is going to be the more it happens and the more it goes on it's going to cause israel to really desire peace and there's only one person who can bring them true lasting peace and that is the risen Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one and only Christ of the world, the one and only Savior of the world, and the one and only Messiah, both for the church and for the Jewish people, for the world. However, Israel does not believe Jesus is the promised Messiah because blindness in part has happened to them or come upon them so that the Gentiles, which is me and you, could be saved. Therefore, they will believe and accept a false Messiah according to Daniel chapter 9 and verse 27. The Bible says, And he, speaking of the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now you really ought to study the 70 years of seven, 70 weeks prophecy. 70 weeks of 70 years prophecy of Daniel. There, of course, in the book of Daniel to understand what he's talking about here. You see, up until the time that Christ was crucified, he was cut off from this world and ascended back to heaven from which he came was 69 weeks. And you can take it down to the day, uh, the prophecy there that last the 69th week of the Lord Jesus, the Messiah riding into Jerusalem on a donkey was down to the day that God said that it would happen. Down to the day. Do the work. Figure it out. We ought to preach through that sometime, that, that prophecy of the 70 weeks. But after that, God, after the Lord Jesus went back to heaven from whence he came, there's a pause between the 69th and the 70th week. And that is the church age. God would not show Daniel, though Daniel pleaded with him to show him what was going on between the 69th and 70th week. And God showed no prophet in the Old Testament, the church age, you see. So we're living in that pause between the 69th and the 70th week. But here we find that the Antichrist is going to sign a covenant for one week with Israel who will be starving for peace 
starving for peace. And the Antichrist is going to, is going to capture so many countries and, and be so powerful and so charismatic. Do you think Hitler had a tongue and a mouth on him? He was a choir boy. He was a first grader compared to what the Antichrist is going to be able to say to persuade men to believe. And during, when they sign this treaty, he's going to sign a treaty with them that they can rebuild the temple on the Temple Mount where the Golden Dome is. One of Muslim, uh, the Muslims, one of their most holy sites, you see. And somehow he's going to convince them there's not a man alive right now that's in power. The Antichrist is probably alive right now, but there's not a person, man or woman in power that can persuade the Muslims now to allow the Jews to build their third temple, which they're ready to do. They've already got the priests ready. The, the, they've already done the lineage through Aaron, and they've got the priests ready. They've got a high priest ready. They've got all the furnitures and fixing for the temple that they could start offering sacrifices today. It would take them two weeks to set up the portable tabernacle like they did in the wilderness to begin Judaism and worship through the sacrificing of animals again, which we know that the blood of bulls and goats cannot forgive sin, you see, but they don't think that Jesus was the Messiah, the Lamb of God that shed his blood for them and for us and for the whole world. So they want to go back to Judaism. So the Antichrist is going to sign this treaty with them for one week. That means seven years. The third temple will be built. And worship will be going on. Then look what it says. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, all the offerings to cease. Now we know from Daniel and from the Revelation and other places that in the midst means three and a half years in. Halfway through, halfway through the treaty, He's going to say, okay, all this is over, okay? And, he's, and according to Thessalonians, Paul wrote that he's going to march into the temple and he's going to claim himself to be God and that everyone is going to have to worship him under fear of being beheaded. Everyone is going to have to take his mark and cannot buy or sell unless they do. And that is when the Jews are going to know they've been tricked that this was a false messiah, this was a false peace, and then they are going to run. Jesus said, when you see this abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, you better get out of town. And the reason it's going to be desolate is because he's going to kill all of the priests, kill the high priest that he can get his hands on, and every Jew in Jerusalem, every Jew in Israel, he's going to be out to kill them, and it's going to become, the third temple is going to become desolate of all Jewish people. And for the overspreading of abomination, she shall make it desolate. Oh, my friends, listen. Those missiles being fired into Israel last night just let us know that the time of the tribulation is upon us and that this is going to keep on happening and, the, and Satan is going to rise up his Antichrist and he's going to rise up to power and he's going to trick Israel. He's going to trick Israel into signing a, a treaty for seven years. The time, my friends, is upon us and it's plain to see. Desolate, even to the consummation, even till it's all over with what God has determined to allow the Antichrist to do. And the reason God is going to allow the Antichrist to do all these things is so that he can bring the remnant of the Jews to him. And I got a surprise. There's another remnant of people he's going to bring back at the end of the tribulation too. I've taught on it once before. We'll see if you remember. Maybe some of you were not uh, following us at that time. Okay? But all this is for the Jewish people to be brought back to the Lord and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be reconciled back to God once more, okay? And all this has been determined. See the end of that verse? Shall be poured out upon the desolate. In other words, everything that the devil can throw at Israel, he's going to throw at them and try to kill them all as he tries to kill all of humanity. Now, after the abomination of desolation, 
After the abomination of desolation, there will only be a remnant of Jews survive, as we've already stated. And that remnant will turn to God and his Christ, their only Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of the world. Now, this is prophesied in the book of Hosea and in other places, but I just wanted to show you Hosea tonight, chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. My friends, we're living in exciting times. We're living, we are living at the time and the season of the Lord coming back. And that is thus saith the Lord. That ain't some crazy coot named Brian Campbell, although he is crazy. But I know what I'm talking about when I read the word of God because God said it, you see. You don't have to believe me. Just believe what God said. Look at Hosea chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. You see that? And without a prince. And without a sacrifice. And without an image. And without an ephod. And without a teraphim, afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. There's a key to understanding in what time dispensation this verse means. You see, after they come back to the Lord Jesus and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to start looking for David to come back and be their king. Because remember we showed you, I didn't take the time to look it up. But it's prophesied that David will once again come and sit on the throne ruling over Israel while the Lord Jesus sits in the temple ruling over the world there in Jerusalem, okay? So they're going to come and they're going to seek the Lord their God and David their king. So we know this is at the end of the tribulation when they, that remnant has come back to the Lord Jesus and shall fear the Lord and his goodness when? In the latter days. You see? Now David will come back and sit there on the throne. Before the great tribulation, there are wars and battles to be waged against Israel. We know when we pray for the peace of Jerusalem that we're praying for these wars to come. We're praying for the Antichrist to come because God said he would. And that he would sign this peace treaty and Israel would sign it much to their uh, destruction. But we're praying for peace in Jerusalem because when we pray for that, we're really praying for the Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, to come back out of heaven with all his holy angels and with his bride on flying white horses and fly down and destroy all those that oppose him and have rejected him. The sons of Ishmael, ancient enemies of God's legitimate son Isaac, remain today, okay? And that is evident. Now let us find what is being mirrored today that has always been when Israel is in their homeland. Look at Psalms 83. I want to point out a couple of things we didn't hit on last time we looked at this. Verse 3 says, They, now who's the they? The sons of Ishmael. Whoever they may be, whether they call themselves Arabs, whether their religion is Islam, whoever they may be, Wherever they may live, the sons of Ishmael have taken crafty counsel against thy people, against Israel, and consulted against the hid, thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. They don't try to hide it. They say they're going to and let, and give everything they got, even their lives, to destroy Israel. Okay? It ain't like it's a sneak attack. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Why? This little strip of land surrounded by vast areas and vast countries full of the sons of Ishmael. Why do they want this little bitty strip of land? Because in reality, they love a God that's not a God and hate the God who is a God. And they love the people that are not the people of God and hate the legitimate people of God. Amen? He says, For they have consulted together with one consent that, and they have become a confederate against God Almighty. Verse 6, The tabernacles of Edom. Now last time we looked at this, I didn't show you where these places were. I just told you where they were, Okay? The tabernacles or the tents of Eden and the Ishmaelites 
of Moab, Ishmaelites of Moab, and the Hagar, Ishmael's mother, and the Hagarines, Jabal, and Ammon, and Amalek, the Philistines, with the inhabitants of Tyre. Asher also is joined with them. They have opened the children of Lot, Shelah. Okay? Now, I didn't have time uh, to get it on the slide, but let me just show you where you can see it here, okay? And uh, let me get my glasses so that I can see it as well. That would be very good if you'd hold that for me, Paul. If y'all want to get somewhere where you can see it, you probably already know it. But here, right here, in this little strip, see that? This little strip, that's Israel, this little purple strip, okay? And then what we can see, thank you, Paul, what, what these places that they were talking about include uh, the Sinai Peninsula, you see? The tabernacle or the tents of Eden, the tents of Eden and the Ishmaelites are southern Georgia, uh, Jordan and Saudi or Arabia. That's here, that's Arabia, and that's Jordan right there to the, to the um, east of Israel. See that? Jordan, north and south, and Arabia, all right? And then Moab and the Hagar, Hagarines are central and north Jordan. So that would be, that would be here, right there in the middle of Israel to their east, and then North Jordan, okay? And uh, Jabal and Ammon and Amalek are Lebanon and Syria and the Sinai Peninsula. So here is the Sinai Peninsula, that's to the west. Uh, then we have the Mediterranean Sea bordering uh, Israel, but all this right here, the Sinai Peninsula, of course we know about Egypt, we know about the Sudan, right? We know about Yemen and all those others. And then it says, and the, and the Philistines and the inhabitants of Tyre, that's the Gaza, Gaza Strip, that's the Gaza Strip, modern day, with people from Lebanon that have come in to live there. The Gaza, Gaza Strip, of course, is also referred to as the West Bank because it's on the bank of the Mediterranean, west of just a strip of land, I think seven miles long, something like that there in Israel, okay? Now, the Assyria also has joined with them, it said. Now, Assyria is Iraq, okay? Uh, or that's Iran, We're, Iraq is right here. And Iran is right there behind it, all right? Uh, so, Iraq is also joined with them. Persia, now you remember, Persia, uh, was all this right here that changed their name to Iran. They were sometimes referred to as Iran all the way through their history. Uh, but in 1935, they officially uh, changed their name to Iran and they are the Republic or the Muslim Republic, okay? So as you can see, as you can see, Psalms 83 tells us what's going on because it is mirrored in modern day today that Israel is completely surrounded here at the Suez Canal, uh, Saudi Arabia, Arabia, and Jordan, Iraq with Iran, and of course we know about Yemen and Oman, and then with Syria to um, the north with the Hezbollah being stationed there, and then Lebanon right here, and there's Damascus uh, that Israel bombed and killed those two generals. Completely surrounded, not to mention all the stand nations uh, to their north and northeast, everyone on the field with Muslims, uh, people, and then also China who is supporting them, and then Russia supporting them all, and really using Iran as a proxy themselves against the United States and Israel. So as you can see, my friends, we are seeing it being played out just as God said that it would. Just as God said that it would there in, in uh, Psalms 83. And remember, you go back to verse 4 and 5, and it says, They have said, Come, and let us cut them all from being a nation, that the name of Israel might be more, no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. My friends, last night's attack was an attack on the apple of God's eye. And they are his chosen people. 
And we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem because we see what's going on now as we see it mirrored from before Israel was a nation and now the attack has resumed because and this is an ancient hatred that the, the illegitimate children of Abraham born through Hagar when God got out or when Abraham got out of God's will and did not wait on God because he promised that Sarah would have the promised child. And the whole world now has been is being brought into this uh, this war between the sons of Ishmael and the descendants of Isaac. So when we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we're praying that God would bring about whatever it's going to take to bring Israel to him. But let me show you something else that you might not have thought about. This was this really shook me when I read this in Psalm 83 and verse 16. Feel their faces. Because I'll admit to you that it's hard for me not to hate those that hate Israel. And I kind of had convinced myself it's okay to do that. But then I run into this. Psalm 83 and verse 16 today. Feel their faces with shame. That's the prayer of the psalmist who prayed for the peace of Jerusalem. He prayed that all those sons, descendants of Ishmael, all the Arabs, that they would be filled with shame. Why? Because they realized, they looked back and they realized that they had been tricked by Satan. They realized that they had been duped and they were on the wrong side. And the psalmist said, I couldn't believe this is a Hebrew guy. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name. Oh Lord. And today when I read that, my heart was broken because that is not my heart. That was not my heart. My heart was for God to destroy them all. But that is not the heart God wants us to have. When we pray for the priests of Jerusalem, Brother Edward, we should also pay, pray for the eyes of Ishmael's sons to be opened so that they might see the true God and the true Savior. Mm -hmm. What a revelation. Because here we go. Hang on now. So when we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we need to understand there will never be peace in Jerusalem until there's peace between Ishmael's descendants and Isaac's descendants. So when we pray for peace in Jerusalem, we should be praying, my friends, not that all of Ishmael's descendants be wiped away. God loves them. God loves them. He don't want to see them annihilated. He wants them to see and their eyes to be open that they've been tricked and repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, you see, then at this reconciliation, there'll never be peace in the world as long as Ishmael's descendants are hating on Israel and Israel is hating on them and the church hating on Ishmael's descendants at the same time. You see, we gotta learn how to pray. We gotta have the heart of Christ and the mind of Christ. During the great tribulation period, their eyes will be opened. Just a remnant, just a remnant of them that will survive. It'll be open to what Satan has done to them and what the Antichrist has done to them and that they were just pawns in his schemes to destroy God's people and all of humanity. And then they'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. True peace will never come to Jerusalem until there's a reconciliation of all people mm -hmm. unto God. Now let me leave you with this hope in Luke 21, verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. 
My friends, I hope that I've helped you in your prayer and your obedience to God. Obedience is better than sacrifice and your obedience to God to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And now you know when you're praying for the peace of Jerusalem, you're praying not only for their salvation to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, but also for the salvation of the sons of Ishmael. Don't let hatred have you. Don't let hatred have that place in our heart. Let us repent as a church and pray for both, for both the descendants of Ishmael and the descendants of Isaac. God will bless us for doing it. Then we'll be praying like God wants us to pray. Amen. I hope your eyes are open and your heart is receptive to the word of God. And I hope that you'll mind God and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. God bless you, beloved.